Today I'm just going to talk about one thing, which is how to make thumbnails using a C program from your Elixir application, for example, Phoenix application. And I'm going to try to prove to you that this solution I'm going to provide to you is actually the best solution outside um, in the entire ecosystem. So, so these are the takeaways. Uh, first, uh, I'll show you how, how to actually call a C library. And secondly, uh, it will be open sourced at the end of this talk. So problem is very simple. You have a huge uh, image and you want to make a smaller one. And sometimes the images are so huge that it may be 6,000 by 6,000 pixels or even larger. And uh, sometimes it takes a long time to actually generate something and sometimes you have to fork out. So um, with the solution, what you get is that you upload the file and you click submit. And, and your, uh, the solution on the left will take uh, less than one second to generate a thumbnail, while the conventional one on, on the right, which you can find on GitHub, will take up more than four seconds. Okay. So the requirements are pretty clear. Just make a thumbnail and make sure that it makes the thumbnail properly. So when you want to do that, you have several um, possible solutions. The first one, of course, is you fork a process uh, and you, you give it some arguments and wait for it to finish. But this may be slow because you have to load the code and you have to wait for the code to finish and then some cleanup may have, uh, may have to happen. So we have to pay for all of this overhead. You can somehow um, create a pool of processes and just uh, use one and then pre-worm another one and, and on and on. But still, that solution gives you higher latency than uh, it should be. Second solution, of course, is you run a custom daemon. But in this case, you, you will have two trees, which is bad. And the third solution is to use NIPs. And NIPs are actually probably not the best solution for image thumbnail generation because if my memory is correct, one of the previous iPhone jail, uh, jailbreak, uh, uh, jailbreak solutions involved a TIFF library vulnerability in iOS and uh, actually uh, use that vulnerability to gain root access. So you probably don't want it in your NIF. The first solution, of course, is you can still operate on binaries like you always do, just operate on binaries. But this will require a deep understanding of how, how these uh, image files are specified. And of course, you have to probably debug it because it may be slow. And in order to debug it, you have to understand B. So the one last solution really is that you write a C server and you somehow make it supervised and you put it in a supervisor and you just tell the C server, generate the file and it will generate the file and pass you back the path. And everything is good because if the C server somehow segmentation faults, then the supervisor will start a new one. Okay, so I'm not going to go into details of each solution because we may be short on time. And one more thing, which is uh, there are many, many image thumbnail generation solutions out there. This uh, image is uh, taken um, from the libvisp uh, homepage where uh, the author has compared multiple image generation, uh, generation libraries, uh, multiple thumbnail generation solutions, and found that certain libraries are much, much faster. So when you have a lot of choices, you, you, you probably naturally want to go with the best one. So libvisp, uh, libvips is actually hidden uh, around the uh, bottom left corner. If you zoom in, you'll find, you'll find it there. That's libvisp, uh, and it's, it's there. <laughs> so, so that's why you should go with the best one, really. And I'm not going to go into why a custom theme may be a good idea sometimes, because in some generation, you don't have to load a lot of definitions. So there is no upside in running a custom daemon. Okay, so into the solution. So the solution here, basically, is that um, you use libvisp, uh, libvips, and then you use the C binding provided by libvips, and then you, you write a C program, which listens from scenario in and, scenario, uh, and throws information into scenario out in scenario error, and then you write a module um, supervised by pool boy, and then that module will then use our exec to supervise an OS process, and then there will be links uh, between the our exec uh, destination and, and your workers, so if something dies and everything dies, then it gets restarted properly. So it looks roughly like that. And um, so, so if your C server dies, uh, basically if somebody tries to feed you a bad image, then this will die, and this will die too, but uh, the next time you want to make a new one, oh, well, the pool will generate a new one for you. So this gets uh, created again, this gets created again. So um, you isolate your solution from malicious input that way. So the C server basically works like that. So um, if you were to simply run the binary from the command line, uh, from, from the PTY, uh, you give it the width and the height of the desired, desired uh, image, and then you tell it where the path is, 
and it will either um, spit into center error, saying that there's, uh, there's no file or the file is bad or unable to open file, or it will just allocate a temporary file and tell you, hey, the file's there. And of course, it will be your responsibility to actually clean up these uh, temporary files. And uh, to prove it, you can see that you use identify to check that file, and you, you will see that the file actually is of the proper, um, proper aspect ratio within the proper bounding box. Okay, so, so that's how you're using Phoenix, it's one line. And um, there is no time for the live demo. There is no time for a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> there is no time for a conclusion. Um, but there is some time for follow-up work, I think. So, so I actually found an, a multi-year-old multi, uh, multi -year -old, um, Earl exec issue open about uh, use of PDYs and scenario error and scenario out conflicts. So that probably needs to be addressed because right now I'm using a hack. Uh, for more information, you can go and check that project out. Uh, it's about a supervised scaler. Once I get Wi-Fi back, I'll open source it and, and, and it, you can download it. Thank you.